Welcome back everyone to my channel. Simpure reached out to me and wanted me to review and install the uh, T1 400 tankless reverse osmosis system. This system here is a tankless system because it has a booster pump on top of the unit here that will take the water from your, whether it's city or well water, boost it up to like 110 PSI and push it through these filters so you can get water on demand. It, it does come optional with a uh, small pressure tank and it does give you about a liter, liter's worth of extra water in volume to use. But what this is really intended for, if you, have, if you want to feed also a refrigerator along with your you know, regular spigot, you can do so. There, it comes with attachments you can put here where you, one goes to the, the uh, faucet and the other one goes to your refrigerator. It comes with lines and all the connections you need to connect it to your refrigerator. This is separate. Um, this is the main reverse osmosis system right here. You get the main unit, the filters, you get all your connections, you get your uh, everything you need to connect the lines. Um, you also get a little small template here with two little black holes. You can't see it here. That's for mounting this here. You can use that as a template to mark your holes where you can hang this up under your sink. It comes also with this nice stainless steel, really nice uh, faucet here and all the connections for that. So what we're going to do here, um, we're going to install it in a um, kitchen island sink. This will work, actually this works perfectly for an under sink, uh, regular kitchen sink, but mine is an island sink, so that's where we're going to put it. Um, the beautiful thing about this system also is for it's got a 1.5 to 1 ratio of filtered water. So for every 1.5 units of water, whether it's gallons or, um, or uh, you know, liters, you get one of filtered water, filtered clean water. Compared to uh, other systems, the regular tank systems, uh, they don't fare so well. They waste a lot of water. Also, the unit has UV sterilization, where it destroys the DNA of the microorganisms, rendering them harmless to you. So these filters are very easy to install. On the filter, you're gonna see it says here T33, and all the other filters says RO. This one here is CTO, and the last one here is PP. Those letters have to correspond with the letters that are written here, T33, RO, CTO, and PP. This one here is a T33. We're gonna have to take the cap off here, so it looks like that. Now, the T33 is gonna go on this one where it says T33. You're gonna to have to turn this about a quarter turn or so and kind of push hard and then give it a turn clockwise. And that's all there is to it. And just do the same for all the rest of them and the filters will be all installed. So we're gonna install this in my kitchen island in the house and uh, let me show you how easy it is. Okay, so this is the island here that we're gonna be putting the reverse osmosis system in. Um, we have a small sink here, and we have the old faucet here to filter our water. Now, the water that we filter out of here, uh, as far as TDS, as total dissolved solids, it only filters it down to like 488. It doesn't at all, <laughs> put it that way. The ceramic filters that I have under here which let me show you here how it works. So this is my old filtration system. It consists of two carbon block filters. And the back there, you'll see two ceramic filters in there to purify our well water. So those ceramic filters filter down to bacteria. They remove all the bacteria. The carbon block filters filter out all the, the chemicals and if there's any lead and chlorine and stuff like that out of the system. We have well water, so we don't have to worry about chlorine. Um, it worked fine, but the problem with those filters is 
the TDS, the total dissolved solids, it only filters down to like 488, I think the last time I checked it. Not good, not good at all. Yes, it, it's got no bacteria in it, but it's loaded with uh, total dissolved solids. It's just stuff floating around. It could be minerals, it could be organic material, it could be anything. Um, I don't like that, okay? So what, with the reverse osmosis system, it'll remove everything from your water. And if you're worried about uh, it removing minerals from your water, which it does, all you have to get is something like this called trace mineral drops. And you just put a couple drops in your water and you're good to go. And you got mineralized water again. Um, I will put a link to that in the description also under the video. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna remove that old system and uh, in this faucet here, and I'll show you how to install this. So the first thing we have to do is shut off our water, like that. Release the pressure from the faucet. Then we can ta start taking things off. All right, so I got all the uh, plumbing connections disconnected and I got this whole area cleaned out here. This is where we're gonna be mounting the reverse osmosis system, right up against the side here. Okay, before we put this unit underneath the sink, this is gonna be the back part. This is the part that's gonna go farther uh, back into the cabinet, so I won't be able to reach this part here that well. So we're gonna connect here is the water out, and you got a little blue sticker here. Sticker here it says outlet water, and this one here, a red sticker, it says wastewater. So the blue pipe goes on here, and the red goes on this one here. This is your wastewater. So we're going to connect these and put these in now. All right, now we're going to hook up the blue pipe, and these are just push and they should go, should go right in there, just like that. And give it a tug, that's good. And the red goes on the wastewater side. You'll feel it snap in there. Give it a tug and it's good. Okay, so these two are set. And then on the front here, this is where your water in goes. So. The way this works, just so you know, this little piece here that's moving around, this pushes in that way. When you do that, you're able to pull it out. Let me show you. Now if I push it in, it snaps in. Now to pull it out, what I do is I get a small wrench. This is here is a 5 16 Put it in there and I can push on it and it'll pull right out. So in other words, it'll, I can push in on it and it'll release this. There. Now, this is ready to install. Now, they give you a template here with a black dot there and a black dot over here. That's to represent this and this here, where you're gonna hang it. Now, we need to measure up from the bottom, the base here, up to, not where the hole is, but up here, and it's 13 and a half. So, we wanna add at least four inches to take the filters off, so that's uh, 17 and a half inches we need to put this up from the bottom of the cabinet okay so what i did under here was i took the template and i stuck it on here because it's got an adhesive on there and i measured up from the bottom here 17 and a half inches well 17 up to these black lines here but that's where i had to line the uh template up and it put this at 17 and a half i pre-drilled the holes just small holes so the screws can go in easily and, uh, and that's it. Now we can hang the unit on it. All right, so I have it hung. The uh, screws, you really can't get to them once it's mounted. So what I was doing is you turn them in a quarter turn, each one until 
when you mount it, it fits and it slides down nice and snug. Um, so it's nice and snug, snug right now and, and it's all set. And I got room down at the bottom to change the filters too. All right, so we are ready to install the uh, faucet. Now, if you don't have a hole in your sink already, I would suggest buying a step drill like this. Um, you can pick these up pretty cheap at uh, Arbor Freight. And if you want to order one on Amazon, I'm going to put a link in the description under the video. And what we're going to do is we're going to put it right through the sink, right where the other hole was. And then this is a nut that they give you, you put in through the bottom. And what you're basically doing is just sandwich, sandwiching the sink in between these right here and then tightening it down. Then we're going to get this quarter inch coupling here fitting and you're going to put it on here just like that. Okay. And it's locked in. The only way to get it off is to push this part in and it'll slide right off. Okay. So we're going to do that next. And now from underneath, we're going to put the uh, nut on. And of course, before you snug it down, make sure it's just how you want it. You got this positioned right the way you want it. And uh, should be all set. All right, so now we're gonna get the coupling and we're gonna put it right on the end and push it off there, just like that. All right, so we're gonna be installing this pressure tank. This acts the same way as a pressure tank does in a, in a well, for instance. So you got this valve here, it's off and on and Make sure he's got the rubber gasket here and this should thread right on. Now this needs to be just hand tightened, snug, pretty snug, and that's it. Now you have this, I guess we'll call it a Y connection here. Um, normally what you would do is put one Y connection in the back of the unit itself. Let's say the unit is right here. You would stick it into the back of the unit where the water comes out to drink. One would go to the sink faucet and this one would go to the pressure tank. So we would put another Y at the pressure tank and the one from the uh, unit would go here and this one would go to the uh, say the refrigerator so you can make ice and get cold water. But I'm not going to be using it that way. What I'm going to be using it is as a pressure tank itself. So I'm going to be putting this here and the drinking water is going to come in here and then it's going to go out here up to the faucet and this is just going to fill with water and there's a diaphragm in there and it's going to store about a liter of water and it's going to give me a little more volume of water basically and keep the pressure more consistent. All right, so we got the blue line coming from the unit into the, the tank and then back out, we're going to connect that to the uh, faucet. All right, so we're going to connect the blue water line right to there and push that in, give it a tug. All right, the next thing we have to install is this drain saddle right here. This is where our wastewater is going to go in this little hole here. We have to drill a hole here. It's got to be before the P-trap here. Okay, so it's got to be up above it. So it's got to have to go here. So we're going to install this right there. And we have to drill a small, a quarter inch hole there to install this drain saddle. Okay. 
and be careful when you doing it you don't go through to the other side all right so after you drill the hole you just take the gasket that comes with the uh, kit and peel the back off and it's self-adhesive on there and you stick it on the hole just like that all right so the drain saddle is installed now these do not have to be tight as soon as you see where the ends pinch there come together and it starts getting a little resistance as you're screwing it on um, you just want to uh, finger tighten it basically is what it is you're going to feel the resistance and you don't want to go too tight remember everything's plastic here all right next we're going to hook up our wastewater line we're going to put it in there and push in there and give it a tug and that's good now we're ready to connect the cold water they give you this valve here and this portion goes to the cold water here so we're going to put that on now now there's a rubber gasket in there much like a hose a garden hose let's put it that way so you don't have to tighten these up really tight just snug them that's it that's all you need now we can connect our cold water line back that's gonna go right here and this again the same thing with this one here you just want to snug it up And that should do it now this top portion here is going to be for the inlet okay we got to be able to stick the hose on there and we're going to cut this to the length that we need and connect it all right, when we're ready to put the line on here, you want to put the nut on there like that. And then support the uh, if you support this valve if you have to and push this on as far as you can get it. Just like that. And then snug this down. All right, it stopped. It, you don't have to tighten these super tight. Okay, now we're ready to turn the main water on. We're gonna keep this one off to the unit and uh, we're gonna check for leaks. And we're gonna turn the hot water on too. Okay, so now double check, make sure you did everything right. We got the water coming in to the unit here and then we got our lines the uh, blue line is your uh, drinking water here and that goes up to the uh, faucet the dispenser faucet and we have the pressure tank hooked up also and we have very important the wastewater hooked up to the sink drain All right, now we're ready to turn on the water here. We'll flip this up. All right, now we're gonna plug it in. All right, now we're gonna turn the faucet on. What it's doing right now is pumping water through the filters. There we go. And we need to let this run for about 20 minutes. 
so it'll flush the uh, system out and all the filters. All right, we got a leak back there. I got to figure out what's going on. All right, so the leak was coming from the first filter and I checked the uh, O-ring. They give you extra O-rings, thankfully. And I don't know if you can see it here in the video, but this was a little mangled up. I don't know if I did it installing it, I doubt it, but uh, it was mangled. So that's why it was leaking. And uh, so I put a new one in. The other one looks really good. And I also put a little bit of silicone grease around there, food grade, uh, the type you can you, you, you use in plumbing. And uh, that should make it slip in better. So now I just gotta install the filter and try it out again. All right, I replaced the uh, filter after changing the O-ring. Now we're gonna plug it back in. And we got water flow. Let me check down here. It doesn't, doesn't seem to be any leaks anywhere. Let the water run for 20 minutes to flush out the system. All right, now I think we're good to go. Okay, so we can turn this off now. The pump, it's very quiet pump, but it's gonna continue running until the pressure builds back up again. And then it'll automatically shut off. But what we're going to do here, I have a TDS tester here, Total Dissolved Solids, and I'm going to show you how much this filters out. So in this glass here, let me give it a rinse. We're going to put the reverse osmosis water. We'll put that here. And on this glass, we're going to put it right out from the sink. This is right out of my well. It only gets filtered, uh, iron, the iron gets removed out of it, um, and that's about it. Here we have it set at zero, showing zero. We're going to stick it in the uh, sink water. And we have here 304. 304, that's pretty high. I've had, I've had it as high as 480, 488 or something like that. 300 is still pretty high, 304. Okay, so let me kind of rinse this off here with the reverse osmosis water. Okay, we're back to zero. Now we'll check this. 003. Wow, that's a huge, huge difference. Well, guys, I'm uh, pretty happy. And as far as taste, it should pretty much taste like distilled water. Yeah, not bad at all. Just, it's tasteless, basically. But because it has all the uh, dissolved uh, solids removed from it, um, it tastes different than the regular water that was filtered through the uh, ceramic filters. Um, this is basically tasteless. And it's just pure, clean water. It tastes pretty good. Now, as I said earlier, if you want minerals in your water, you can buy this trace mineral drops, put a couple drops in there and you'll have mineral water or mineral, mineralized water, put it that way. Um, so uh, you don't have to worry about drinking water without any minerals in it. If you do want minerals in your water, rather than getting the T1400 UV filtration system, you can get the T1400 alkaline. This one here has got the alkaline filter and it also adds minerals to the water. Okay guys, so I'm gonna put a link in the description on the video to the system and everything I used here. Um, and the uh, tester also. 
All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys in my next video.